<laughs> Here we go. We're going. All right. Well, welcome okay. to Arise and, and Shine with Jeanette and Sandy. Woo! Week five. Week five. We made it. We did mm. it. Yes. So here. <laughs> yep. Just to remind you, this is my house. That wagging tail is one of my dogs. <laughs> And Greg's out. He'll be coming back, so these guys will probably be barking as soon as he comes back. Barking dogs soon. Just saying. Uh -oh. Okay. You want to open us, open us up in prayer? Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Lord, for this time together, um, and for a rise and shine, for the birth of of something you're you're bringing out in our sweet little church, Lord. And I just pray it continues to bless all those around it. Anybody who ends up watching. Um, we thank you for this time. Sandy and I thank you very much that we can dive deeper into your word and become closer with you. And that's our goal and hope for uh, anybody who joins us, that they really deep, dig deep into the word. And it's like sitting on the couch with your best friends. So I, am, I pray that others can do that as they get into the word and, and learn about you and learn your heart and learn your big love for you, for, for, for each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Amen. And you have a little something, something special. Can I do, do show that now? Do. Yes. So in uh, thinking about what we're doing and why we're studying the women of the Bible, I was just thinking, is, number one, it's to get to know, of course, all these women of the Bible, but it is also to be able to figure out, um, well, to know who we are in Christ. So I'm um, talking with Pastor Dave on Friday. Um, I think I want to say he kind of challenged us to ask each and every one of you, do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? And so um, that's an important thing to know. And so that makes me think of identity. And I was looking at my bathroom side mirror, and I've had this on for a couple of years. But those of you who went to the very last women's retreat, um, this is the identity declaration that Erica gave all of us, and I still, like I said, I'm still on my mirror, so I thought it'd be good to kind of, do you want, you want to go ahead and read it? I'll just sure. Read it so you can. Sure. Yep. It says, Identity Declaration. I am a woman of God, redeemed by Jesus Christ, love pursued and chosen, equipped with words of life, clothed in strength and dignity, commissioned here and now, gifted by the Spirit, forgiven and unbound, Blessed is she who believed. Thank you, Erica. This just Thank like you. keeps blessing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And um, Pastor Dave also, you know, uh, talked about a couple of Bible verses that you can. Let me pull up my little. Oh, it's not on there. Okay. Actually, it's Ephesians. Um, I believe it's chapter two, verses eight to ten. And oh my. Okay. Well. Anyway, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. Can you? Erica responded. This is so this awesome. Is so awesome. Oh, I took a picture of that and showed her that we're doing that. I had my phone. Um, but Ephesians 8, chapter 2, 8 to 10 says, oh, oh I'm sorry. It's, um, for it is by grace that you have been saved, and um, it is not of yourselves, um, because it is a gift of God. And... Um, I, I believe, oh, are you, can you give me the rest of it up? That would be a good one for okay. our memorization. But that's the most of what I do. Sorry, guys. I thought I had it here. That's, I know eight, Sorry. I just don't know. Ephesians and 10. Ephesians 8 to 10. Oh, no, there's a 6. Oh, Ephesians 2. Okay. You know what? Why don't we just come back to that? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Dave did challenge us, and so I just wanted to let you know, um, because there's another verse that talks about how we're in the work, um, we are the workmanship of Christ, and, and how he's prepared us for that beforehand, so I just wanted to let each and every one of you guys know, you girls and guys, if you're watching, um, know that we are a completed work of Christ. The second that we accept Jesus, we are his completed workmanship. So that's awesome. So if anybody asks, we we are completed. I mean, I know we feel like we still have things to do and we're not done yet, but you know, God already foreknew who we're going to be in Christ and that you can rest in the fact that we are his completed workmanship in Christ. Right. 
So. And and that's how he sees us. And yeah. on Friday, Pastor Dave liked it, likened it to going to a motorcycle shop, and all he sees is the frame. But the guy who's working on the motorcycle is like, no, this is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And he's got to tell you. But when you go back six months later, or you know, three months later, it's completed, and you're like, oh wow, I did not see that out of that frame. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what it's like, and God sees us as the completed project, even though we're we're the frame at the moment, and that's that's the big thing yes. at the moment. At the moment. And then as we go through life, we we're, we're put together. Yeah. Yeah. And not of work, so I found it. <laughs> oh, good. So um, it is chapter 2, um, verse 9, continuing, is not, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Um, so, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So not good works unto our salvation, but from after our salvation, we're created for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Awesome. There you go. Awesome. So awesome. anyway. So that brings us to the identities of these women that we are talking about this week. And um, so we are on the virtuous women and the villains. So the virtuous women versus the villains of the Bible. There's kind of a lot of them. So we just chose a few, a few notable ones. And Jeanette's going to be talking about Naomi and Ruth. Naomi and Ruth, the the virtuous virtuous. women. We're going to start with the virtuous. And this is going to be a two-part series. After we did the first one, we're like... This is a lot of material. We need to break this up. And so that's what we're doing now. We're doing virtuous and villains, and we're going to break it up into two sections this yeah. time. Mm-hmm. So even though I, I've got like a d- double whammy here with Ruth and Naomi, so I really dug into these ladies and their story in the book of Ruth. There's uh, only about four chapters. And, well, there's four chapters in Ruth. <laughs> and uh, it's, There's a lot going on in Ruth, though. Right? Yeah. But I, I dug back into a study done by uh, uh, Pastor Chuck Smith, and I listened to this study, and he's really good for kind of digging into what was going on at the time. And uh, so Naomi, she and her husband, I don't know how to say his name, I think it's El, Elim, El, Elimelech, or something like that. Oh, Elimelech. El, Elimelech. They moved to Moab to avoid a drought in Judah. Uh, where they lived at the time, they were they were in Bethlehem, which is like if, we're, if you know we're in Orange County, but I live in like Tustin, or I live in Tustin, Tus- Santa Ana. So yeah, it'd be a Santa Ana and Tusty and <laughs> something like that. And she's from Orange, so she'd be an Orange, orangey person. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, something like that. So Elimelech, uh, they moved to to Moab. Elimelech dies. And Naomi, this is important, Naomi means pleasant. And it's kind of interesting that the, the names back then kind of have meaning. And so she means pleasant. And I think Elimelech means, uh, I forget, it's something about God. And it's a really nice uh, description uh, and says basically he's a godly man. So from the get-go, as a baby, this is what was given to him. And Naomi means pleasant. Now they have two sons who married mowed by women and I, and I know that was like a speed bump for me because I know in reading that they weren't supposed to marry outside their tribe so here's what Pastor Chuck was really good about explaining at that time it was it was everybody does as they please kind of like now in the United States that um, it, was, it was like the morality of the day so that's how that could have happened. They just went like, oh, okay, everybody's doing this. We'll do it too. So there was a lot of, it was a time of great moral decay is what he described it. And that, and that everybody's doing it kind of thing. So Naomi has two sons and very interesting. Mahalan means sickly and Killian means tiny. So they could have been born like little preemie kids and you know, woof, they made it to adulthood, yay. And so she got them married um, to to these girls from Moab, and uh, they end up dying. The like, sons. The sons yeah, end up the dying. Sons. So the sons end up dying like ten years later when they were adults, 
and they're and they're married, uh, and they have they don't have any kids. So Naomi tells her daughter-in-laws, you know what, you're young, go back home, go get married, have have a good life. And oh, op, oh, op, op, ah, how do you say her name? Oh, how do you say her name? How do you spell it? It's, it's not Oprah, it's like Orpa. 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 That makes me think of the whale, like Orca. Orca. Orpa. Orpa. Okay. Orpa goes, I love you. She cries. She misses Naomi, which says a lot about Naomi. I, apparently, she does match her name of Pleasant because these girls don't want to leave their mother in law. And I mean, if you take a survey, That's probably nice. <laughs> probably not a whole lot can say, oh, I love my mother in law, <laughs> you know? I mean, this says a lot about Naomi, mm -hmm. and and these and these young ladies that they really embraced her and they embraced the culture and and what their husbands stood for and their father-in-law. Uh, so Naomi, she finds out the drought's over. She's gonna head on back to Judah. The girls want to come with her, but no, she says go home, go get married. And then uh, Ruth says, nope, I'm staying with you. And this is kind of a key thing, kind of like how when Rebecca left her family and went to go meet Isaac, it was like, nope, your people are my people and your God's my God. Where it was, a, it's like a whole big sellout. And that's verse 16 of um, chapter one in Ruth, and which that's what sets Ruth apart. That even though she's Moabite and they're not supposed to get married to them, she's like, I'm not a Moabite. I'm with you. So this is what sets her apart. And uh, I really think God blesses blesses her and Naomi in this. All right, so they head on off to to Judah. When they when they get there, Naomi's friends are like, Naomi, you're back. Pleasant is back. And she's like, mm-mm, don't call me pleasant. Call me bitter. Call me Mara. Oh, that's right. So Naomi was even blaming God for her problems in verse 20 because uh, she didn't know God's plan. All she saw was the frame of the motorcycle. She didn't see the whole thing, right? So, just, I mean, I get that way where I'm like, what the heck, God, why? You know, because I don't see the whole picture, right? Okay, she didn't know God's plan, and this is so cool, this plan, how coincidences at work yeah all right so they're hanging out in judah at naomi's place and ruth asks naomi hey you know i'm gonna go to work i'm young i can go out and you stay here and i'll and i'll bring us some food it's the barley harvest is going on so harvesting food's being harvested and now uh they their welfare system was these fields that as they were harvest the farms that they could only go through once and if they miss something they miss it you can't go back for it and that's where anybody who was hungry the welfare system they came in and they harvest afterwards so that's what Ruth did all right so she went out and she uh, went out to just so happen there's that coinky dink not really thing she just so happens to go into a field owned by a man named Boaz now Boaz is somehow related to Naomi's family. I, I don't know if he's a brother or you know distant cousin or something, but he's related, which means he has the potential to be a kinsman redeemer, which uh, kind of relates to if you remember the story of Judah and Tamar, where Tamar uh, her husband died, so Judah's like, okay, be with this son, and then he dies, and he's okay, be with this son, and he dies, and then he's like, wait, this one's not old enough, just wait a sec, and when he is, I'll let you know, and then he didn't, he doesn't tell her, so she takes things into her own hands, but I digress, it's that same thing, where, where you, you're, you're allowed to marry on in the family, so you can produce an heir to keep that family name. So that's what that's all about. All right, going back to just, just the intro. Just so happened, Ruth's here in this field, Boaz field. Boaz happens to be in that part of the field. And he's like, 
hey, who's that? You know, and they're like, oh, that's Ruth the Moabite. She's uh, taking care of her mother-in-law Naomi. You know, the the uh, what is it? The overseer the, of what's going on explains because Ruth. So it kind of tells you Ruth's character. She goes to him. And she goes, hey, can I? Can I harvest here? Is that okay with you? She asked permission. She didn't just go. It's her right to go, but she asked permission. So this shows her character, which is pretty cool right. on her part. So it goes on that Boaz is like pretty happy about this. And uh, so he offers for her, yes, uh, stay here, stay in my field, keep coming back. And then he invites her to lunch too. <laughs> he invites her to lunch. And he, he personally serves her, which is a big deal, you know? It's like things are happening, you know? She's probably looking up at him, and he's probably stealing a glance, that kind of, that's how I imagine it. Who knows, but that's how I imagine it. All right. So then uh, she also, she talks to him, and she's like, uh, you know, thank you. I'm a foreigner. I know I don't have to be treated nicely. I know I can, it's. You, I'm at your mercy and thank you for being merciful and because Boaz is a godly man matter of fact when he comes in to that field he greets his servants with a blessing from God may God richly bless you and they're like you too you know and then after he, uh, she talks to him saying hey you know thank you for being merciful he's like you know what no and, and this is a little bit about Boaz um, he preaches to Ruth about God and he prays that she's blessed for helping Naomi and all that she's done. And this is in their first meeting. This is his character, which is pretty cool. This guy's a really nice guy. So Ruth heads on back to Naomi. Now here's where they kind of get mm, intertwined. She goes to Naomi with like, look what I got. And, brings in, and Naomi's like, dang where were you you know usually it's like you know you get a turn up or two so just kidding my interpretation yeah <laughs> all right so she's like oh i was in boaz's field and and i they were good to me they let me harvest with them and he made sure i was going to be safe and naomi's like boaz hmm he's a kid Kinsman. Hmm. And then that kinsman redeemer, I'm sure, is like going on in her brain, right? So Naomi kind of like, hmm, kinsman redeemer, Ruth, Boaz, Ruth, Boaz, Ruth, hmm. And so she tells Ruth to go out at, at the end of the harvest to go out, um, stay hidden, get all clean and gussied up, put on your perfume, and go out to the threshing floor and ask. Boaz to be the kinsman redeemer. Basically, what this means is straight up tell you. He's basically saying, "I want to have your baby to keep the the family name going." That's pretty bold, right? But hey, that's how they did it back then. So she does that. Well, and she asks for covering, cover me uh, later on. And uh, this is in, in verse. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, chapter four, he does. He says, yeah, I, I, I will, if I, if I can't, there's another that's closer kinsman redeemer. And if, if I can't, then I'll make sure that you're taken care of. And so he does that. He sends Naomi, or I'm saying, he sends Ruth back to Naomi with another big, you know, basket of food. And Naomi's like, this man's gonna take care of us. And she starts to have faith again. She becomes, it's like she becomes Naomi again. And it doesn't say that, but mm -hmm. that's when it's like there's this turning point with her where she's like, oh, there's some wheels on my motorcycle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So Boaz ends up, uh, clears himself as kinsman redeemer. They, it, Ruth and, and uh, Boaz get married, they have a baby named Obed. Obed becomes the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. Oh, hmm, the Davidical oh, line. Guess who comes from there? Oh, to Jesus, <laughs> right? You know, follow the follow the dotted line. Very cool, very cool, and, and showing how 
you know, we're back where Naomi's like, oh my God, my husband died, my kids are dead, you know, I have my daughter-in-law, and she calls herself bitterness, and she blames God for this, but she doesn't see the picture, and then God is weaving this incredible cloak, <laughs> and incorporating her family into the Redeemer's line, huge, huge, it's so, it's such a good, a good book to just hit. It's only four little chapters. Read it, enjoy it, kind of ruminate on this and see how there's so many like, just so happens, mm -hmm. he comes here, just so <laughs> happens, you know, and it's like only God can do that. So yeah. take your time uh, this week to check that out and read that. So mm -hmm. our, that's uh, our two virtuous women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a lot. Wow. This is why we we're breaking it up. That's this is why we're breaking it up. It's like yeah. Rachel and Leah. We probably should have done that for Rachel yeah. and Leah, but that's okay. We're doing it now for Ruth and Naomi. And yeah, I do. love that story. I do too. And then um, to think of you know us women there that are trying to find our Boaz. Yeah. Well, you know they're out there. It's a real beautiful mm -hmm. romantic story. Yep. So, but I don't get to talk about romance this week. <laughs> I'm talking about the villain. Well, well, actually, so it's the woman of Andor, and um, today, and I know we're like a week or two ahead right now, but um, today for church, Pastor Rick did speak on the woman of Andor, um, and then so uh, the J King James version calls her a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Um, that's in 1 Samuel 28:7. The Revised Standard Version calls her the woman who is a medium. Uh, modern writers have dubbed her kind of the witch of Andor, mm -hmm. which is, you know, for dra dramatical reasons. <laughs> it makes me think of Snow White yeah. and and the the witch that comes out of the cave. My pretty. You know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think of the witch of Andor. Um, Lord Byron called her the Phantom Seer. And um, Kipling gives one of the most vivid, vivid portrayals of all in these lines. And I'll just read a little bit of it. Oh, the road to Andor is the oldest road, and the craziest road of all. Straight it runs to the witch's abode, as it did in the day of Saul. And nothing has changed of the sorrow in store, for such as go down the road to Andor. <laughs> wow. Yee! That sounds spooky. Yeah. So, um... This woman, I guess we can picture her, you know, it says here, like a wise old person, even though she's got gnarled hands and <laughs> leathery skin, possibly, you know, dark hair over stooped shoulders, but I mean, um, crazy hair or crazy hair. <laughs> but um, knowing the context of what was going on in this uh, whole story of the woman of Bondor, because there's not that much about her, but um, but but what it, what there is about her is pretty significant, and we want to be warned not to go down that that road. But we know that this is the um, the context of the story is about um, Saul and after the death of Samuel. So Saul is um, you know he, he's he's kind of be, in his older days he's become a desperate king. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to try and hold on to his kingdom, and um, Sa Samuel dies, and then, like Pastor said today at church, um, that it's funny that he he um, he put all of the spiritists and the mediums, and he basically kicked them out. And so we're just kind of, you know, I I wanted to ask like why why did he do that? And this is because. You know, because that, that left kind of like a vacuum after Samuel passed away, possibly. I don't know. I don't know why he kicked them all out. Maybe he was just really well, upset. Well, he did ask God, which means he went to yeah. another priest. That's true. But yes. God was God. not responding God was, to him. That's right. God yeah. was not responding to him. Because so he's like, he done. And yeah. Samuel said, yeah. God, done with you. Right. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. So, um, in doing that, and I don't know why I moved my my book away from Samuel. I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, so in, in doing so, he he tells, he he says, find for me someone, find for me a witch, basically. 
So yeah. he, he knows. He knows he's going away from God because God won't answer him as far as getting an answer. And, um, you know, and, and I think he just kind of wants to know how much longer am I going to be king? How, how can I hang on to this? And anyway, so... He's a uh, desperate man. He's a, a desperate, very desperate man. A very desperate man. Yeah. So I think we can think of what do we do in situations where we're all desperate. Sometimes um, we do really dumb things. <laughs> When, when we're desperate. So, you know, we can identify perhaps with uh, King Saul at this point. Um, so anyway, he takes two men with him and he goes and I, uh, when I was doing a little commentary on it, I guess this was like kind of on the outskirts of, of where they're at. And um, so it's about six miles southeast of Nazareth. That's, that's what it said. So the road he traveled led six miles southeast of Nazareth on the outskirts of Endor were many ancient caves. Mm -hmm. And so let us just suppose that this woman um, with the familiar spirit lived in one of them. But backing up that familiar spirit in Leviticus 19.31, um, we are told specifically to regard not those that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards <clears throat> to be defiled by them, I am the Lord your God. So, you know, other passages um, also denouncing sorcerers and stargazers appear in Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Jer Jeremiah. And so um, also in the reign of Saul himself, he, he, he had put away those, right. those familiar spirits. And then I think that was the first about. time. So once again, you know, you got to remember this is, this is a moral decay time, this, this time yeah. of judges. Yes. And so Saul was the first one to start moving back, but we all saw that he he did it half baked, you yes. know. And if you do it half baked, it's it's still half baked. Right. <laughs> it's right. not done. Yeah. It's not done right. Yeah. Yep. 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 So so this this woman that he found. Um, so I, try, I was trying to think of how do we relate it to today's times. We. Right now, we've got that celebrity medium that I think, you know, I mean, even if you don't watch TV, I'm sure you've heard about it from friends maybe that are not Christians, and they talk about the celebrity, um, I forget what that guy's name is, but he's the celebrity seer, I guess, um, medium. And so he, he, he actually does, you know, he, I guess people are following him just like people follow this woman because things probably came true so a lot of people went out of their way to go see her like today a lot of people have gone out of their way celebrities to go see this guy celebrity um, medium that are telling that's telling them everything but he he has a familiar spirit so you know a lot of people just kind of like don't know because you might think is that of god you know and um it's just we just have to rely on what the Bible says, you know, that we are not to associate ourselves at all with familiar spirits. Right. Now, that does not mean that God cannot work through that, because we're going to see when um, when Saul goes to see her, that she herself is surprised that Samuel actually... Yeah, yeah. and, and I okay. think familiar spirit, pastor described that as mm. demons. So, yes. From, so yes. when Thank she's... You. When you're pulled, when the medium pulled, at, you know, asked for the person, he's like, oh, I want to see my uncle. And like, okay. And she's like pulling up the uncle. She's not pulling up the uncle. She's pulling up a demon who looks like the uncle or, yes. you know, knows of the uncle's, you know, things. I'm just using uncle as a, yeah. 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 So she's working with demons. That's so kind of like yeah. trickery. Trickery. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of whether they know it or not, they think it's right. like they're communicating with the dead, but they're yeah. not. They're communicating yeah. with the demon who's tricking them and tricking everybody else. Yeah. yeah. And how do we test that? Um, I I believe that that you know, Pastor did say today that God, of course, can do it for whatever reason. Um, he can bring back someone to see. But it's more personal. Someone. Yeah, it's more personal. It's more personal. Yeah. It's it's more personal. You don't go to somebody to ask. Right. right. God will. Yeah. And I believe it always has to point back to God. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so if that were to happen. Okay, so uh, back to, so, and again, this is in 1 Samuel chapter 28. So anyway, they, they get there to the Witch of Ondor, 
And um, she immediately says, what is she? Okay, taking two men with him. Yeah, made her way to the glo oh, oh, he's, gloomy he's cave. He's disguised, too. Yes, he is disguised. Saul is disguised. He is disguised. So she don't recognize him as the king because she, she knows she'd be dead. Not. Right, yes. And so she says, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life? Wow, this must be the King James Version. <laughs> to cause me to die. That's 1 Samuel 28, 9. Um, but Saul, King Saul, which she didn't know right at this moment that he was him, um, said, said to her, there will be no punishment. So the woman asked him, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And Saul commanded her to bring up Samuel. But the woman now cried with a loud voice because she knew, just like Pastor said, as soon as he said that, that really the only person who's going to ask for Samuel is going to be King Saul. Mm -hmm. So um, she, she then knew at that point and she screams out with a loud voice, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And so she no longer doubted she was being visited by the King of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, but can you imagine what, what she was probably thinking at this point, right? Yeah. Like, am I I'm dead. I'm, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead meat. <laughs> yep. So um, she says, an old man cometh up, she spoke, and he is covered with a mantle. And I thought that that was so interesting what Pastor said today about how we're going to be, how we knew that that was from God because of the way that he was dressed in the in the robe. The robe, yeah. And so um, I did not catch that when I was doing my study. So that I, I loved that. Good insight. Yeah. Yes, very good insight. Um, so anyway, it also shows. So let's just keep on going with the story. So Samuel's there, and um, he basically tells Saul. What does he tell Saul? Dude, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. In my version. lack of better words, exactly. He actually does say that. He says tomorrow, basically, you're going to be with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, and I think Saul possibly because we're look if we're looking for answers and God doesn't doesn't answer, and then we go to find our own answers. It's because we probably really may know what the answer is. Yeah. But we don't want that answer. We want to hear something else, so we go somewhere else to hear something else. And so um, Saul went somewhere else, but he heard exactly what he probably already knew, yeah. that his time is over. And, um, and so Samuel, you know, from God, sent from God at that, at that point, and the witch knew this too also, because she's like, okay, I'm, I'm out of this now. Yeah. <laughs> Samuel's here, yeah. and this is of God. Yeah. yeah. So imagine everything that this woman could have been had she been working for God, with mm -hmm. God, had she laid everything down and used her gifts for God. I mean, I just think how awesome this woman could have been because apparently she was, you know, but again, she had a familiar spirit, yeah. but I, I, I do believe that if she would have laid it down and God, you know, just wasn't his will. Yeah. There was a reason for this and that was obviously this. But anyway. And so. I think you lured into that. Because there's a yeah. sense of power of like, I can do this for right. you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then here yeah. she was even doing it after, after mm. they were kicked out, after they were in trouble. Yes. yes. And she still, you yeah. know, she still made a little name right. for herself. Yeah. Mm, like that celebrity yeah. guy you were talking yeah. about. Oh, I can't remember that, his name. Anyway, yeah. his name's not important. But it's just um, funny. This commentary says that she, she kind of let go of her witchiness though. Right when, you know, Saul, of course, gets all distressed after this news and he like falls down, whatever, right, right inside or outside yeah, her, he's hungry. her yeah. door. Yeah, and he, he hasn't eaten. Um, kind of think for him. He's got to think about like not letting people eat. I don't know. Or he was fasting or something. I, yeah. I think, I really think he was looking for a different answer than what, like I said, than what he already knew. Yeah. But he, he had to have known. But he something. does that to the point of uh, stupid. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a, a battle before where he's like, nobody eats until these guys are killed. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan dips his, his uh, the end of his, his uh, I don't know, spear into some honey, and he, he, 
he eats it and he's rejuvenated. And everybody's going, <gasps> and, and he's like, what, what? And they're like, your dad just said if any of us ate, we're gonna die, we're gonna be cursed. And he's like, ah, oh, if he had just let us eat, everybody we would feel good and be rejuvenated. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'll look at this weird thing about mm-hmm. not eating. I don't know. And it's, it's that just, is weird. I yeah. Know what that's about. But there might be something else going on there. Yeah. Okay. A little, a little food issue. I a think. Little food issue. <laughs> um. So, but this. So the woman actually becomes kind of like, I don't know what you would say, motherly, she or takes care she takes care of him for a little bit. She. It. It kind of alludes to the fact that that she became caring and she beca- she just laid down her you know yeah for what she normally does and she became a woman yeah she became a caring woman yeah she could have um, said you know there's cheese in the fridge I'm yeah. out of here <laughs> yeah. but she goes out and she had a calf and she yeah. or her, whoever she kills it or something anyway she yeah. makes some food yeah she bakes bread she kills yeah. a calf um, and it wasn't like going to the grocery mm-hmm. store. You gotta get dirty. Yeah. You gotta get dirty yeah. to make a meal. And she says, "Before you go on your way, eat this." So, yeah. so it also might allude to the fact that she did know more than what she actually may have told him. Um, you know. Well, I think and, I think like you said, and she found out from Samuel yeah. anyway that he's gonna die tomorrow. Yeah. So she's like giving him that that last meal. And, and so, but right. but she has some sort of um, you know I don't want to say repentance, but but she she feels a little sorrowful yeah. for for the king at that point. So yeah. it seems. So anyway, that was very interesting, mm-hmm. and um, she showed her human side of her too. But you know, she it says in the beginning too she may have done this because it's the only thing that she knew how to do to make money. But uh, I don't really you know. So yeah. anyway, we have choices in life. You can yep. make good choices. You can make bad choices. Just because you know how to do something, you know, we just have, again have to, it's like hold everything you do up to the light of the word and know that, you know, remember that we're in Christ Jesus and therefore there is now no condemnation in those of us that are in Christ Jesus. So, so, um, I, we just shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't be doing these, these things if there's anything, I, cause there's something, oh yeah, something else I wanted to point out. So, but that's the Witch of Bondor. Um, so if I had a nickel for everybody, like at my shop, because I do facials, um, that call, used to call me like literally every week. And did I already bring this up? I don't know, I feel like I told I was telling you. Um, Reiki, if anybody knows what, what Reiki is. Reiki is kind of like, I don't know. I, I want to think of it. It's supposed to be a massage. It's supposed to be a massage. But it's but like it's doing, like, dealing with your aura. It's, it's like the Ouija board. It's, it's like the brand new Ouija board. So I just kind of yeah. want, wanted to warn everybody of that. It comes across and people say it's healing, it's energy work mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's really pervasive in my field. And um, so if I had a nickel for every time an esthetician or somebody, a massage therapist would call me and ask me, can I practice at your shop Reiki, you know, and um, it's it's really good for you, it's energy, and I, I'm just like, no way, yeah. no way, I don't want that stuff in my shop, um, but so it, it's just kind of like that, you know, things can creep up, and we just have to, if right. we know it's wrong, and we have that gut feeling, yeah, we have to, yeah, research it, and yeah. do not let it in, because th- that is, I just believe it's one of the new ways for Satan to get in the back door right. of all of us, and um, and that's just, a sign of the times, just like with Naomi sign of the times, of like yeah. craziness happening. Right, yeah. right. But so. but it's divination. It really right. is divination. And it's like it's really so. is a, a big a big craze, and like that's a big thing. I hear it too. Yeah, because yeah, so. dealing with yoga and and yeah. physical health, I'm I'm always like, oh, do you do reading? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. I don't. Right. Just like the devil doesn't <laughs> wear a red suit with yeah. and and walk around carry with a pitchfork. His pitchfork. Yeah. Go tea. <laughs> right, right. So it's funny how this Reiki is coming across as something of healing, healing, mm-hmm. and energy and so spiritual. Spiritual. Mm-hmm. So be careful, you guys. Yeah. You know, because we're just not supposed to do, do those things. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that. I yeah. think that's it. Yeah, that's with a little, a little peekaboo of next mm-hmm. week. Uh, we Hannah. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna be looking at Hannah and then Delilah. As our, right. our, our virtuous is Hannah and our villain is Delilah. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, and um, this Thursday, so if you want to come join us this Thursday morning because you would like to do the challenge memory scripture, even if you haven't been with us before. I know a lot of you guys out there are watching this, but you've not come on to uh, the actual um, talking part where we just get to kind of hang out with each other and talk about what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, win now. You, you could win that. It looked really good in your house. <laughs> Look how yeah. good it looks in my house. <laughs> just saying. And so if you guys don't know how it all works, um, once again, we have a video conference call. And this is it. It's about it's about 30 or 40 minutes sometimes. About um, an hour. Yeah, about an hour. It's usually out on Sunday, and you have from Sunday to Thursday from that point to watch it, and then to download on the same site of occc.church. We have a study sheet that you can do. You don't have to do it, but it just gives you more in depth of a study on what we're talking about. And, um, and then we'll go over it Thursday morning and then we get to get together Thursday morning. And just, just again, a way to stay connected with each other until we can get back to our church. And um, I think that's, that's it. Anything that's else? Wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap yeah. again for great week number five. Yeah, so let's uh, yeah. go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for um, your message today to all of us, Father. Thank you for bestowing on us what it is that you wanted us to hear and to learn, Lord. Let us be doers of your word but and not hearers only, though. And um, I just ask that you um, bless each and every one of these women as they go about and download the study and work on um, the studying of these women of the Bible, Lord. And uh, until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. See you Thursday. Thursday morning.